So, in this video, I'm going to go over all the ocean strats you can use to speedrun in Minecraft. This includes shipwrecks, how to loot ocean monuments, how to enter the nether using magma ravines, and many other smaller tricks you can use in actual runs. Let's start at the beginning, as if we just entered a run. Let's say you spawn in and you see your ocean. The first thing you're going to want to do is punch three wood. With the three logs you got, you want to turn that into a crafting table and two sets of six. The reason for this is so that we can make a wooden axe. We want to get a wooden axe so we can mine the wood a lot faster. You may think that making a wood pickaxe and digging down to get stone is faster, but overall this actually saves a good 20 seconds at least compared to mining down to get stone. After you make your wood axe, you really only need to mine four logs. That's all you're going to need. With these four logs, we're going to make a set of doors, a boat, and a set of bowls. The reason we want doors is because you can place them down and you can go in them to breathe and also so you can mine faster when you're under water in the ocean. The boat is because we're going to be going across water and the bowls is so that we can make a source of food while we're in the nether. Because usually for ocean runs, you're not going to get that much food. Also, if you pass by any dandelions, you want to make sure you grab them. The reason we want to grab these dandelions is you can actually combine it with brown and a red mushroom in a bowl to make a really good suspicious too. You have your normal mushroom shoe, but if you add in a dandelion, you get the suspicious too. The reason it's so good is it can do this. That's right, it heals six and a half hunger bars. So as long as you have three and a half hunger bars left, it will bring you all the way to full hunger and it will give you loads of your health back. So now that you have your bowls, your boat, and your door, the first thing you're going to want to do is get into the ocean and look for shipwrecks. Now this is a full shipwreck. We have the front side of the shipwreck and we have the back side of the shipwreck. You also know it's full because it has the three masts coming out the top. The front side of the shipwreck has a stern that comes up to the front and basically makes a point where the back side of the shipwreck is a lot wider. The reason we want to know the difference is because the back half of the shipwreck has this little cabin room and this is your iron chest. Iron is the most important because this is how we'll get our bucket, our iron pickaxe, and our flint seal to enter the nether. The front, of, the front half of our shipwreck has our food chests. Food chests are still really good because you can get a lot of food in them, which is really good for runs. Like these carrots, we can make into golden carrots later once we get gold from the nether. Of course, we have our wheat and another suspicious too. There's a third chest that spawns in shipwrecks, and it's underneath the iron chest. This chest has your map in it. Buried treasure maps can be good, but you should really only use them if you end up not getting enough iron from your iron chest. And most of the time, if you can actually see some land in the map, because that means you're actually kind of close to it. Let's say you want to find this buried treasure, because you ended up not getting enough iron from the shipwreck. There actually is a trick you can use to help you find the buried treasure more easily. Remember, on maps, up is north, right is east, down is south, and left is west. So if we want to get to our buried treasure, we're in the top left of our map, so that means we have to go southeast. Let's see, if in our F3 thing we have northwest, there's east, there's south, so we want to head in this direction to get to our buried treasure. We know we're close because we start to fill out the map. Looks like we're right above the buried treasure. Normally, you may think you have to dig around to find the buried treasure, but there actually is a trick you can use. Once you get yourself right above the X, you want to look at your F3 here. Two spots below the coordinates, there's this thing labeled chunk. And if you go to 9, 9 in your chunk, you're, that's always where the buried treasure is. So let's say we're 10, 6, 10, 7, 10, 9. Here's 9, 9. So if we dig down at 9, 9, this is always where the buried treasure is. Here's our buried treasure, loads of iron, diamonds, gold, and food. Buried treasures can often be really good. The middle number of your chunk doesn't matter, that just shows what Y coordinate you are in the chunk, but for buried treasure, you always want to go to 9, 9, and it will always be there in that chunk. As long as you're right above your X and you go to 9, 9, that's how you'll get your buried treasure. Anyway, let's get back to shipwrecks. Remember, there's a front half and the back half. Back half has iron and your buried treasure map. Front half has your food chest. But you don't always get a full shipwreck like this. In this case, this is just the back half of a shipwreck. Remember, we know because it's a lot wider than the front is, so this just has the iron chest in it. If you see this, you can still definitely do the run. This has all the iron you need to enter the nether, and then you can get mushrooms in the nether, and you can use your bowls to make food then. So if you see this, you're good. 
Sometimes though, you only get the back half of a shipwreck. In this case, this has the food chest and the map chest. So here's our food. And you actually, I actually got a lot in this case. Some carrots, some wheat, some rotten flesh. And then here's our treasure map. So we could get this buried treasure. It's still gonna be kind of far though, and we ended up getting no iron chest in this shipwreck. Also, I just want to add, the back half of shipwrecks all, always have this window. So if you're seeing a shipwreck that's kind of toppled over, and you can't tell whether it's the front or the back, look for the window. If you see the window, that means that you're at the back. There's a window on all three sides of it. So let's say we spawned here and we, we picked up some dandelions. So let's say you just spawned in your run, you picked up some dandelions, you top down. Okay, so let's say you just spawned in on your world. You picked up dandelions, you chopped down three logs, made your axe, chopped down four more, ended up getting your boat, your bowls, and your door. You run over and you see a shipwreck. So let's get over to it. So now that we're at the shipwreck, how do we actually want to loot it? Well, let's see how much iron there is. This shipwreck ended up having 9 iron, and then enough to make 2 more ingots, so that's 11 iron in total. 11 is the magic amount you need want in a shipwreck. After you grab your iron, you want to go down right next to the shipwreck, place it on your door, and you can do some crafting. The reason 11 is so good is because it's just enough iron for you to make a full set of tools, a bucket, and a flint seal. So that means we can make a pickaxe, a shovel, an axe, a bucket, and we still have one iron nugget left over so that we can make a flint and seal. If your shipwreck happens to be over gravel, then this is where you can dig to get your flint, and then not, of course with the last iron you have, you can turn that into a flint and seal. In this case it's sand, so then as we're going to find our magma ravine, we're gonna have to still keep a lookout for gravel. Let's say there is only 10 iron in the shipwreck. What are you going to want to make then? If we have only 10 iron, we're basically just going to want to leave out the shovel. So we're going to make our pickaxe, our axe, and our bucket. After you've made those, you can actually just mine down one block and there's usually stone underneath the sand or gravel that your door's on. So you can mine this, swim down, and make your shovel with the stone you picked up. Now let's say there is only 8 or 9 ingots in the shipwreck. Then what you're going to want to do is you make a pickaxe and a shovel. And then of course also your bucket. Now we need an axe, so what we're going to do is we're going to mine the ground next to us, and we'll just grab our three cobblestone here, and we can make a stone axe really easily. Now the least amount of iron you can get to actually run a shipwreck is seven. Seven means you can make just your iron pickaxe, a bucket, and now you just have one iron and get left over for your flint seal. All this means is that you're going to have to dig down and grab cobblestone to make both a stone axe and a stone shovel. So it's not that hard. You don't waste that much time. And it, these tools are only a little bit worse than an iron one. So now that we have all our iron and we have all our tools, there's two things you can do. Either you can look for a magma ravine to enter the nether, or if you see an ocean monument, you can try and loot that to get the gold blocks from it instead. Ocean monuments are actually very good because inside the monument you have these cubes and inside you have 8 gold blocks which is more than enough to trade for a full run. Of course you have to get these after you get your shipwreck because you can mine gold blocks with your iron pickaxe. Of course the main problem with ocean monuments is that usually when you're in survival you're going to get hit with mining fatigue. Let's see how long it takes. There it is. For the most part, if you get mining fatigue, you're unsaid, unless you've already gotten your gold blocks, and maybe you see a cow, and you can go drink milk. The way to prevent this is when you see an ocean monument, you want to go into your settings and turn down your render distance so the ocean monument isn't loaded in. This makes it so the Elder Guardian isn't loaded in. Obviously, this one's already loaded in, so let me find a new ocean monument that I can turn down my render distance for. Okay, so there's another ocean monument. So we see which direction it is, and we're going to want to turn down our render distance. This makes it, again, so that the guardians don't load in. Once you see the monument, you want to turn down your render distance as far as it will go. Once we're actually at this monument, our goal is to get the gold blocks, and they always spawn in the exact same place in monuments. We need to find the back of this monument. The back of the monument has these arches, that's how we know it's the back. For the most part, the block is underneath the second arch from the side. And it's pretty much a guess. 
you just check one side first and uh, you see if the block's there. You place your door, dig down, and then keep placing door until you're in the open. You're like, oh, this isn't where the block is. So all you have to do is go back out and go to the other side. Again, two arches from the end of the row, you place your door, dig down. And now we actually see our block this time. We know we're in the right place. What you're going to want to do is go up here, dig down one, place your door, and now you can mine all eight of your gold blocks. Once you have your blocks, you just can dig out or go back in the way you came, grab your door, and now you're on your way. Of course, you could still get hit with mining fatigue. It doesn't happen that often, but it would basically kill your run. So remember, you always want to make sure you turn down your render distance to the lowest it could go when you're actually getting the gold blocks. It also helps if you dig more towards the end of the monument. Because if you dig this way, you're just a little bit closer to the Elder Guardian. So it's a slightly higher chance to get hit with mining fatigue. So now you have all your iron tools and whether or not you have your gold for the monument. What you're going to want to do is find a magma ravine. Finding magma ravines is mostly luck based. But one trick you can use is to turn on hitboxes, which is F3 plus B. So you hold down F3 and click B. What this does is it makes it so you can see the hitboxes of entities that might be floating on the surface. For the most part, that would be seaweed. If you see loads of seaweed on the surface, that means there's definitely a ravine there. This just makes it a little bit easier to see. And you basically just have to hope it's a magma ravine, which it is most of the time. There we see a bunch of hitboxes. In this case, there is, so we got lucky. Now we can actually enter the nether. Now this is where our doors come into clutch. This is the reason we made them in the first place. You're going to have three doors, remember, because all the doors you place down, you always pick up again. You technically only need two, but three makes it the easiest. When you're in a magma ravine, what you're going to want to look for is an L shape. It's a pretty small L, it's just three blocks. This works, however, something like this works too. You still have the L shape here, it just has other magma blocks around it. Best case though, we do just have the L shape by itself, because that means we're going to have to replace less uh, of the magma blocks into obsidian later. Once you find your L shape and an actual magma ravine, you go to one side of the L and you place your doors on the opposite side, just behind the magma blocks. You dig down on the third block and place your door here. What this does is it makes it so that we can place a block here, break down, and now we have access to lava. Now we can actually start grabbing our lava and building the frame of our portal. When you're grabbing lava, you want to make sure that you grab the two lava that's underneath the two magma blocks from your L. This is because we need this to be air, otherwise our portal won't be big enough. We can place one there, and one there. Now it doesn't matter 100%, but when you're grabbing lava, you more want to grab the lava that's actually behind your portal. That's because if we grab the lava that's on the left here, we're going to have to replace that with obsidian again, because that's part of our portal wall. Now with the last two lava, you can place one up here and one up here. There's the top of runner of the portal. That's one of the reasons for the doors as well. So then you can place obsidian up here without having to jump up and get out of the door. Now we can actually go ahead and break the magma blocks inside of our portal. And we're gonna wanna place one on the side here to stop more water from getting in. All right, there's usually water inside here. Now what we can do is we can break the bottom here and pick up our water. Now we actually have a full portal frame. Assuming you actually didn't forget to grab flint like I did. There we go. You can just light your portal now and you're able to enter the nether. Now if you have an L that has a lot more magma surrounding it, all this means is we're going to have to replace more of our uh, actual obsidian walls of our portal. So we're going to do the same thing. We place our door on one side of the L and we place our other two doors on the opposite sides of the magma box. And we do the same thing. We place our block and we pick up our lava to build our frame. Break the inside and place a block to stop water from getting in. Now for the most part we have our frame, but this part is an obsidian. All that means is we have to break it and grab more lava to place there and turn it into obsidian. Now in the same way we can enter the nether. There's actually one more trick I want to show you guys. Dolphins are a very important part of the ocean. Because dolphins are fast. They're faster than boats. And if you have Death Strider along with Dolphins, you go extremely fast. If you can, always go for the Dolphin because they're slightly faster than boats. And there's actually a special trick to get them. What you can do is if you turn down your render distance to 2, it actually has a higher chance of spawning Dolphins. Okay, that was fast. Not supposed to work that way. Anyway, the reason this works is because you can't 
NFT very much. So the game likes you spawn entities and places where you can't see. Obviously, if your render distance is up, you can see so much more. Here we go. We already have dolphins here. When your render distance is at two, you have a much higher chance of spawning dolphins in. And after you, that, you can turn your render distance back up. And now you have a dolphin, which again is much faster than a boat. And maybe you don't even have a boat. So this is always helpful. That is pretty much everything you need to know about the ocean. If there's anything I forgot, please let me know in the comments down below. But for now, that is a speedrunner's guide to ocean strats.